this is amazing. Uh-huh. Well, okay, this is what I want to do. Don't pay me. Like, I, let's not, don't credit me, first of all, so that legally what? you cannot pay me, okay. so that I can just say at conventions that this is an apology for the horrible movie. That the, that's the whole reason, right? Oh, my goodness. And so goodness. Then, then he's like, oh, this is wonderful. I've got an app on my phone. And he takes my name and he rearranges it to a new name in really? this app. Yeah, and he goes, he's like, oh, this is perfect. Mr. Easter Jabs. Mr. Easter, this is perfect, James. I'm like, no, Chris, that's too cute. We're going to get caught. It's got to be like a boring name that's forgettable. If we're we're going to get away with it. Elise Bowman here with Anime Adventures and I am with James Marsters today. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. And guess what we're going to talk about? All kinds of things. Anything you want to talk about. Anything. Yeah. Oh, that. Except for Dragon Ball Super. Oh no. No. (laughs) We are going to talk about Dragon Ball Super and we are going to talk about Buffy and perhaps Torchwood and Runaways and so many things. Smallville. Smallville. So we are at KameaCon, so I think we should start with Dragon Ball Let's Super. Let's do, yeah, probably. Now, here's what I didn't know, that you were a Dragon Ball fan for like 20 years. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty awesome. My son, we were in Toys R Us, and uh-huh. I think he was seven years old, and he said, Dad, can we watch, he holds up a DVD, can we watch this? And it said 13 years plus. And I said, son, tell you what, let's watch it together, mm-hmm. and if it's too much, I'll have to turn it off, but yeah, let's try it, we'll talk about it. Okay. And we started watching it, and I found that I was watching a show with the perfect man as the lead, Goku. Yes. Who is humble and peaceful, and if you give him his choice of a perfect afternoon, he is playing with his children. Oh, yeah. But if you attack his family, you are toast. And that's what I think is it's the it's it's the perfect man, and it. It, and, and, and this was back in Dragon Ball uh, Z. Mm-hmm. And then, by contrast, you have Vegeta, who is constantly creating chaos so that he can prove that he's tough, which is an overgrown boy. You know what I mean. Yes. And there are, and you see guys of these two ilk, mm-hmm. you know, and one of them I want to have dinner with, and one of them I really, really don't. Really, know? really don't. And, yeah. and one is a very frustrating type of person, and one is a really wonderful kind of person. And so it just led to really great conversations about what a man is. That's which is really a, cool. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's the enforcer of peace. He's not a chaos star. That's really cool. Yeah. How yeah. great that you had that opportunity to chat with your son about that and, and have that realization. Yeah, and, just, just, and, and have an example of that that he really was invested in, his imagination was taken by. And, and it helps him become an amazing 27-year-old dude, because he's amazing now. Are you interested in voice acting? Are you a professional actor, or just interested in getting started in the industry? You're in luck. At least Bowman is now teaching four different classes. She has private and group classes that she teaches. Stuff that I learned with her has been the business of voice acting. I learned the physicality, the confidence, and just how to improvise and how to become a new character. Just taking the character off of a page and bringing it to life. And if you guys are serious about doing voiceover, it's super easy. Go to leastcoaches.com, get signed up, and uh, we'll see you there. So let's talk about your Dragon Ball character and how, how did you even get involved? I was in a horrifically bad movie called Dragon Ball Evolution, which was the live action version of Dragon Ball. And it did not turn out very well at all. And I knew it. And as a Dragon Ball fan, it was heartbreaking. And so when I heard that they were doing a new iteration of Dragon Ball, Mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Super, I had gotten to know Christopher Sabbath, who directs all of the the, the voice work. Um, And so I called him up and I was like, Chris, can I just be like the mailman on Super? (laughs) Can I have three lines? I'll just, I'll do anything. I just want to be redeemed for the horrible film. (laughs) And he's like, I don't know, James. Um, Let's put you through the paces. Why don't you come down to Funimation? And, I uh, love your imitation. <laughs> I don't know, James. And so, so I went to Texas. I came here to Texas uh-huh. and uh, went to Funimation, and we sat down and and he, and he put me through the paces for like two or three hours, and sent me home. Mm-hmm. And a couple weeks went by and nothing happened. I thought, well, I'm not. He didn't live up to Dragon Ball standard. <laughs> and then he called me up and, and offered me his arm suit. 
and I really couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. And so uh, I said, okay, this is amazing, uh -huh. but okay, this is what I want to do. Don't pay me. Like, I, let's not, don't credit me, first of all, so that legally what? you cannot pay me, okay. so that I can just say at conventions that this is an apology for the horrible movie. That the, that's the whole reason, right? Oh my and so goodness. then, then he's like, oh, this is wonderful. I've got an app on my phone. And he takes my name and he rearranges it to a new name in really? this app. Yeah, he goes, he's like, oh, this is perfect. Mr. Easter Jabs. Mr. Easter, this is perfect, James. I'm like, no, Chris, that's too cute. We're going to get caught. It's got to be like a boring name that's forgettable. If we're going to get away with this. And I, was, and I thought I'd try to find a name that was boring enough to be forgotten, but cool if you read it. And I came up with David Gray. Seriously? So, yeah, so David Gray is the credit on the thing, but it's me. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I had no idea. And I, yeah. I love these prints. I always yeah. love to hold up the prints. That yeah, is so a this fantastic is, This story. is honestly before he becomes a total dirtbag. <laughs> this is before he decides to kill all humans on Earth. And he's not, he's, he becomes disillusioned after about two or three episodes. Yeah. And then he turns into this guy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is, yeah. <laughs> that, I love that story so much. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, well, so we will move on from Dragon Ball mm -hmm. and rewind in your life to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, yes. Yeah. How long were you on that show? I came in in season two. Mm -hmm. I was only in one episode of season three. I'm not sure if that really counts, but yeah, it counts. Okay, then that's what it. So any acting <laughs> counts. <laughs> five years on Buffy, uh -huh. and then the last year of Angel. So six years in total. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What is um? <laughs> okay. That so is, by the way, this is. Yeah. This is the very first picture ever taken of Spike. Oh, is it? Really? Yeah, I've been playing for about an hour at this point. An hour? Yeah. Really? I'd, I'd Were you like, no pressure? I've been spiked for an hour and you want me to take a... Picture? Well, no, it was a really good sign. If they're doing publicity shots, it means they're not going to kill me off right away. Yeah. So you were like, awesome. Yeah, because the thing is, like, I came down to Los Angeles. I'd been a, a regional theater actor and then oh. I'd become a father and realized in a flash that I was in the wrong profession to be a father. And so I came down to Los Angeles as kind of a Hail Mary to try to earn father money. Really? And yeah, and and I, after, by six months I'd gotten Buffy, and they said I was going to be in between five and ten episodes. Uh, five if we don't like you so much, ten if we really like you. And so we did the first scene, and everyone was like, oh my god, this is wonderful. The director was really happy with it. Everyone was telling me I was doing a great job. And I'm like, I think I'm going to be getting more like ten around here if I play my cards right. So that's the smile of a father who's no longer poor. That, okay, <laughs> remember that. That's, that's pretty awesome because yeah. how you don't know well one it's pretty cool that you went from theater because that's such a good background to have yeah. theater to this but you don't know as an actor five episodes ten who moved five years oh my god and, and yeah. then six wait you said six right when it went to angel, yeah. went to angel. yeah like amazing and then into a full-blown career and yeah the only reason i got to be a regular on buffy yeah is because they lost cordelia because she went over to Angel, and she was the character on Buffy that told you, Buffy, you're stupid, we're all gonna die. She was that person, and she, they lost her. So they needed someone to fill that void. To say, and, Buffy, you're stupid? Yeah. And you were like, yeah, and that was pick me, me yeah, pick I'll me. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do yeah. that. So do you have a favorite moment from Buffy that stands out to you? Either, um, it could be either from the movie or just something behind the scenes. I gotta say, kicking Angel's ass on his own show, that was a good episode. That was awesome. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was a look at me go. There was a moment, and there's no lines for this, but I, Spike is really mad at Buffy, and he comes to shoot her with a shotgun. And, but he notices he, she's sitting on her backyard porch, and he walks up, and she's completely brokenhearted, and he kind of melts, and he kind of puts the shotgun down, and just sits next to her, and kind of puts his hand on her shoulder, and just sits with her there. And he just does a complete turnaround. And, and I thought that was a really good one. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them. There. There's there, a lot of them. It's a really well written show. Too. I did, I, it's uncountable great moments. There, I, I remember. I mean, there were so many good moments. Yeah. It was a really great show. I miss that. Yeah. So, and you have, man, you've done so many great shows. 
like Smallville. Uh huh. I almost didn't do Smallville. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, I was out to dinner with the guy who thought it up, Al Goff. Yeah. A great producer, and and I I was like Al, I gotta I gotta be honest with you, I'm a Batman guy, and he's like, really? What? Why? And then, I almost lost the role right there. And I said, <laughs> well, well that would be kind of like a I said, turn this off. is the thing. When Batman goes to work and he's trying to save people's lives, mm -hmm. you don't know if he's going to make it back to the to the mansion because if you shoot him, he's dead. So it's exciting. But Superman is going to be fine. <laughs> we know it. It's, it's not exciting unless you pull out kryptonite, which you do every time there's a movie. You have that scene where Superman might die, and it's very exciting. And they get away with it because it's only one story every few years. But you're doing a new story every week, Al. You can't pull out kryptonite every week. What are you going to do? And he's like, James, my Superman is a teenager. He's vulnerable to everything. And I just about dropped my fork. I was like, that is genius. And that's why I think it's just, it's, it's probably the best, the best Superman treatment for television ever made. Because they just sidestepped. The problem with Superman, which is that you got to be vulnerable to have a, uh, an adventure, and Superman being invulnerable is very hard. Writers complain about this all the time. It's very hard to write that character. Yeah. But he sidestepped all of that and just treated it as, as a young man growing up. And they had kryptonite and they had super, they could have all that too, but the meat and potatoes of it was really just a dude trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, so at that dinner, did did the tables turn and you decided? Oh, I like, completely oh, got on board. In. I was like, dude, you're a genius. Oh my god, yeah, he forgave me for <laughs> the Batman. I'm in. <laughs> take me, take me. Yeah. So you've done so many other great shows, and I know we could chat forever. But what is one other story that stands out from something like Torchwood or? Oh, Runways Torchwood's or... great. Yeah, Torchwood was great. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to to get the lead character back to the dark side. So so we meet in a bar and then we beat the living snot out of each other in this huge bar fight. Uh, and that's the introduction of the character. And and I was just like, this is awesome. <laughs> and John Berriman uh, and I both come from stage where you don't get a stuntman. So we don't want a stuntman. We're like, we can do this. Get it, let You're us like, do this. I got this. And, uh, and I think the stunts got in for two shots in the whole sequence. It was just John and me just oh. pummeling each other all day in the bar. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I like to end the show doing a character voice. I will do your Dragon Ball super character. Okay. Oh, I tried. So I'm going to copy you. So okay. you do the Behold character. the power of the gods. Behold the power of the gods. Not bad. Okay, yeah, no, so now I'm going to change my name up to something unrecognizable, but mildly amusing, but not too amusing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it's to not draw attention. Okay, hey, thank you for joining oh, us. Yeah. Thank you for being here. This was awesome. And we will see you again. See you later.